So Greater Manchester Police are doing Hate Crime Awareness Week, which is basically trying to uh, show their commitment to uh, supporting people who are the victims of hate crime um, and show that and try to increase the levels of uh, reporting. So there were 5,000 hate crimes or hate incidents uh, last year, um, which was a 20% increase on the number that were reported the year before. And that doesn't mean that the hate crime is on the up. It just means that people are getting more confident in reporting it. And they're just trying to show their commitment that they do take hate crime seriously, um, be it against gay people, people or people of different ethnicities or uh, even people who decide to dress or listen to a certain type of music they experience hate crime they just want to show their commitment to actually helping those people um, and if they do report it because yeah you said that you know um, hate crime it's it's not actually on the rise is it we just we're just hearing more about it um and and that's obviously i suppose testimony to to events like this and isn't it yeah i think i, I don't know the i don't know if it's not necessarily on the rise but it's definitely getting reported more and they're trying to just increase the awareness because i think a lot of the time people can think that maybe the police won't take them seriously um and this is them showing that commitment that they absolutely will take things seriously if people do want to report it what actually is a hate crime, do you think? So hate crimes, there's hate crimes and there's hate incidents. So mm. hate crimes are when a crime is committed against someone for the reason of them being different in some way. So if someone was beaten up because of the fact that they were gay, that is a hate crime. A gay person being beaten up for another reason wouldn't be a hate crime necessarily because if they got just beaten up for... Uh, you know, for something else, then that's not a hate crime, but actually being abused or assaulted because of their sexual orientation, that is. Or a hate incident, for example, would be where a crime is not actually committed, but it still potentially could escalate something like that. So someone having homophobic, maybe being shouted at being for being gay, maybe it's not a full-on crime, but the police still want those to be logged and reported so that they can keep tabs to make sure that those sort of things don't escalate and they can keep an eye on the type of people that do do that. Okay. Um, you were a victim of a homophobic attack, wasn't it? And that, that was here in Manchester. Tell us a bit about, about what happened there. Yeah, so 10 years ago, when I, was, I came to university in Manchester, so pretty much exactly 10 years ago when I was down in Fallowfield, um, I was out on a night out with one of my friends um, and uh, in Fallowfield, and I was headbutted in the face and called right. an effing uh, Eek. F word <laughs> right, that is okay. related to gay people. Um and at the time, I, and I then reported that to the bouncer in the bar and the bouncer just said, oh, what do you want me to do about it? And it was kind of, for me at that time, I'd just come out properly. I'd moved to university, decided that actually I was going to be myself. And it was quite difficult for then that to happen to me because I thought, oh, is this, is this what's going to happen? Um, and I didn't report it um, and I should have done. But I think at that time, I wondered whether I'd be taken seriously mm. and you, you wonder if people were going to actually help be there to help you. And I suppose sometimes, you know, you, you, you kind of brush it off, don't you? And, and yeah. even though you shouldn't do, you kind of, you kind of go, oh, well, yeah, I am gay and, and that, you know, that's just what happens. Yeah, you kind of just think, well, you know, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't hospitalised or anything like that. I was head by the face, fell to the floor, you know, didn't break anything. And I kind of thought, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not in a real bad state from this so is there any point and you know you're a student you kind of think well I'm not going to mm. leave my night out to go to the police <laughs> station to go and report something that's not resulted in something really bad but then actually is that person going to then go and do the same thing to someone else or could that escalate to something worse later in the future which is why it's important to report these things so that you know they do get stamped out and I think yeah it's as as someone, you know, 10 years ago, I think we're in a different place to where we are now and, you know, worrying about being people taking you seriously then. Maybe 10 years ago, people wouldn't take it as a seriously. But I think what's great now is that Grand, Greater Manchester Police are making this commitment that they will take these things seriously. Mm. Um, and so people can have the confidence that if they do report these things, then they'll be listened to. OK, um, you mentioned that, you know, the door staff, they weren't kind of, um, you know, they quite they weren't helpful at all. Um, do you think then that, that you know, that there needs to be more uh, publicity around hate crime and, and what exactly is a hate crime so people can understand it a little bit? I think it's something that should be talked about. And I think so that, you know, did I necessarily see myself at the time as a victim of a homophobic attack? Maybe not. Um, and I think 
like you said, it kind of you might think that actually it comes with the territory a little bit. And you know, given I'm I'm half Indian as well, and I've been used to being called sort of racist terms as mm. well when I was younger at school, um, and also you know the word gay being bounded around as an insult when you're at school, and you're kind of used to this sort of um normalization of these words being used and actually then to that to be an assault maybe didn't register as something as big as it maybe should have done at the time so i think yeah there is a piece about trying to increase awareness as well mm, okay um you've uh, you, you, obviously you came you came out and told your story about about the hate crime and since then you've started doing work with with organizations haven't you You're here in manchester um to support the manchester hate crime awareness week um but you're also starting doing work with stonewall tell us a bit about that yeah so um stonewall i did i did an interview with a website called are you coming out and uh, which is a great website that um basically shares coming out stories um of lots of different people so that people then thinking about coming out can go to it and read other people's experiences so I did that um, and then off the back of that I've then started doing some stuff with Stonewall where they do a school role models program so what I'll be doing um, I've got my first one coming up in a week or so um, is going in and doing assemblies with kids and talking about my experiences of coming out and being gay um, so that for the kids who maybe are gay um, they've got someone that they can see that's a bit older than them and has gone through what they've gone through and they can see that there's light at the end of the tunnel mm. even if they haven't come out yet they can kind of relate to someone hopefully um, but then for the kids who aren't gay it gives them someone who is gay that's actually they can see that gay people are kind of normal um, and hopefully to decrease the bullying side of things as well just by sort of sharing experiences and talking to kids there so yes that's going to be kicking off with Stonewall which I'm looking forward to and also doing bits and bobs going and talking in universities as well um, about my experiences. And and uh, you you're going to be talking with, like with, with the kids. Are you, are you going to tell them about the 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 attack? Then is it important to, to to let the kids know that you were a victim yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's you know it's important to get across actually you know to kids that this sort of thing does happen. And I think by talking as someone that has experienced that, hopefully it will make people think twice about sort of attacks or of a physical kind but also like i mentioned the the gay language and saying oh that's so gay and that's gay you know you wouldn't you wouldn't use that in based on someone's race you wouldn't use it as an insult so why do it based on someone's sexuality so even just insults and bullying from that perspective hopefully by seeing someone who's had it from the other side um that might help to reduce that yeah you'd be foolish not to uh, not not to talk about the offenses yeah, yeah. while while you're here um so you know, Obviously, uh, that was that was ten weeks, wasn't it? Ten week. What, what we saw the journey as, as in yeah. as in ten ten weeks. How how was that for you? Yeah, ten weeks. It was uh, it was the best thing I've ever done in my life. It was really good fun, but the, also the most challenging thing I've ever done in my life. Living in a house with all those people that you're competing with, competing with them on a daily basis, having to go through the the boardroom, which is really intense and tough, and just the kind of emotional roller coaster that you go on. It was it was fun, but it was tough. Mm. Um, what, how, how did you feel about uh, the people that you were with? Because uh, you know, obviously now you're out of the. the are you going to remain in contact with 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 people that you yeah. that you met in there? Yeah, or? there's a few of them. So like Katie, Roisin, James, Solomon, um, Lauren. I've, I've very much stayed in contact with, and I'll. But you know, I went out with. I took Solomon uh, for a trip out in a uh, night out in Soho the other week, and <laughs> right. we ended up in GAY. Uh, he absolutely loved it. So he was dancing on the stage in GAY the end of it so um yeah solomon um is a, is a good friend of mine uh some of them maybe not so much <laughs> uh, okay we, we won't go into that <laughs> yeah but there's there's some interesting characters in there definitely but it was you know it was good to meet them all um even if uh just from a character building point of view so what made you apply for the the, the apprentice because it's not something that m me personally I, w I wouldn't i would i'd stay well clear of it because alan sugar scares the life out of me you know what i i've watched it every single year since it started and mm. i'd always said i'd absolutely love to do that one day and this year after i, w I watched the last series and i just something in me just went you know what i'm gonna apply this year and i applied 
um, and, and I got on it. So it was just it's something that I've always wanted to do. I thought it looked like a lot of fun. And actually, if I'm honest, I, I went in it more to experience it than I did to actually win it. Um, obviously, I wanted to win. I'm not going to pretend I didn't. But I went in. I, it was as much about going and having the experience of doing all the tasks. And I got to do all 10 tasks, which I'm really happy about yeah. um, as anything. So, yeah, it was it was it was a great experience. <laughs> um, tell us about uh, the, the, the restaurant, though, because you, you're looking to open a restaurant, aren't, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, so um, I, I, my business plan wasn't a restaurant on the appearances. No. <laughs> my business plan was uh, health and fitness social media site, which I am in talks with different people about um, potentially doing as well. Okay. But um, what I've always wanted to do is have my own restaurant. Um, so I quit my job in banking the second I finished The Apprentice. I went back on my first day to a teleconference about loans and credit cards. Uh, kind of thought, screw this, and <laughs> pretty much resigned. I went and spent three months in Leeds um, helping my friend Scott set up. Um, he's got a restaurant called Meat Liquor, which there's a lot. <laughs> right, it's okay. <laughs> Liquor start L-I-Q-U-O-R. <laughs> it's, it's not something you're going to kind of find in a basement on Canal Street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, so I went and spent three months helping set up the new one in Leeds and running that to get some experience. And I want to do Indian street foods, kind of making Indian restaurants cool. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's the plan. That, that's quite then. fashionable, isn't it, as well? Now, you're getting quite a lot of, um, I suppose, the, the like craft um, eateries and, and um, you know, like street food fairs, that kind of thing. Yeah, and I think you've. I want to kind of do a, a restaurant, but... Um, if you take the traditional Indian restaurant, you know, which is great, you've got like the white tablecloths and the chairs and everything. It's all quite formal, and I want to make a much more informal setting with sort of almost like a Mumbai backstreet sort okay. of feel to it, with kind of cool bungra music, nice cocktails, sort of sharing plates, that kind of thing. So that's my that's my vision. So I'm working on the business plan at the minute to hopefully get some investment and make it happen. Fantastic, fantastic. So I mean, you know, that is the future for you, then, isn't it? You yeah. know, so this is this show, if you like, is kind of uh, well set you up I suppose yeah well it's, it's, it, it was life changing in that it made me want to leave banking completely and go and give it a go on my own um, after meeting some of the people that I, I did and you know being inspired by them but also getting to demonstrate and do a whole load of other skills that I didn't know I necessarily had um, and so it's great yeah to be able to then go and be doing that and then it's also great to then have the opportunity to come and give my support to stuff like Hate Crime Awareness Week um, off the back of it. Okay. Um, so the, the Manchester Hate Crime Week it's going to run all week then isn't it? Yeah. Um, if, if you're listening to this and you're thinking you know what, what about you know how do I report it? It's quite easy isn't it to, 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 to report hate crime? Yeah so um, there's a couple of ways so you either uh, can phone up um, the normal police number which is 101 and report it through there or obviously in an emergency use 999 but if it's not an emergency 101 um, and also there's a website where you can uh, report hate crimes which is www.report-it.org.uk